Hey there guys, welcome back for another Mortal Realms Monday painting video. This week looking at painting uh, Reichnor the Executioner. And as always with my uh, Nighthorn army, I've gone ahead and primed this guy in white. And a little bit different with this one, I'm working on the base first um, because of the... Um, the object source light in some of the light effect that I want on the base um, means that the statue has to be painted before the um, the horse. So I'm going to work on the base first, which will be the first part of this video, and then I'll move on to the horse, then the rider, and finish off with the wings. So first of all, I'm just taking some Mechanicus Standard Grey and just an old uh, battered brush here just to use as a base brush and I'm going to cover all of the base with uh, this Mechanica Standard Grey um, with exception to obviously the um, the creeper vines um, and uh, the skulls. Alright, once I've got a couple of coats of the Mechanica Standard Grey that on. I'm now applying some Dawnstone to a couple of the areas that I want to be of a, a brighter, lighter stone. Um, so the the tiles on the floor, you know, the um, those big square tiles are fine being dark. But this um, tomb piece here um, looks like a broken grave stone type thing. Um, the statue and the wing that has broken off of the statue are all going to be done in Dawnstone as well as this little grave piece down here. Um, again it looks like some kind of uh, tombstone um, but like you know one of those flat ones that lays on the ground um, rather than a headstone. So uh, again I'll get on with this and like I say it's going to take good three or four coats to get this to that opaque dawnstone color rather than the uh, the mechanica standard color and uh, let that dry and uh, I'll catch you guys in a bit okay so once that's dry you can see that I'm now flooding the dawnstone grays with a wash of um, Agrax Earthshade and obviously this is to get that sort of dirty earthy um, feel to these stone areas um, obviously the way that I'm doing this I do have in mind what I'm wanting to do um, in terms of my light sources with this um, again which is why I am um, working on the base first um, but it's also why I'm only working on certain areas of the base um, at a time so like I say I'll get this wash all over make sure that it uh, gets into those recesses nicely um, and sort of you know really darkens up some areas and adds uh, shadow and that let that dry for about 10 to 15 minutes and then uh, move on with the the next step all right now that the um, Agrax Earthshades had time to dry I'm going back to the Dawnstone and I'm picking out areas where I want obviously to be brighter so I'm leaving those recesses uh, with that sort of that dip darker um, Agrax grey and I'm picking off the uh, the lighter areas now the light sources that I've got from this is obviously a natural light source um, from above the model but I've also got the candles around the base which are going to produce a little bit of light and the horse's legs are going to give off um, sort of a spooky glow. So whilst I'm painting this, I'm bearing in mind where those light sources are and where my slightly lighter area is going to be. Um, for the most part, the statue is going to be fairly lit up, obviously from all sides due to the, um, the light sources around it as well as above. Um, but there are some areas that are going to be a little bit darker. Um, so whilst I'm painting this, like I said, I'm, I'm just bearing in mind that certain areas are going to be a little bit more in shadow. And so I'll uh, do a couple of layers less on those with the Dawnstone 
and areas where there's a bit more in light I'll uh, bring it back up to that dawnstone opaqueness so that'll get a good extra two or three layers uh, depending on obviously the area. As always my paints are thinned down slightly um, from being transferred into the bottle and using a wet palette so I don't need to mix too much water with them to thin them down. Um, you can see that I do have a, a nice bit of control over the paint and the opacity here. Okay, so now that the uh, the Dawnstone has dried, you can see on the palette cam there that I've got a, uh, a drinks bottle um, cap with a little bit of, um, I think it's Mechanicum Grey, I believe. It's the light one. Um, and all I'm doing now is just dry brushing this over the statue. Um, I like the dry brushing effect as it's going to give it a little bit of a chalky... Um, a little bit more sort of chalky stone look to it and I can also use this to concentrate a little bit more on those areas that I want lighter so obviously um, where the light source will be I can go a little bit heavier go back over an area a little bit more to lighten it up um, and obviously not so much in areas that are going to be a little bit darker now just off to the side of me is a paper towel which is obviously what I'm wiping this on and then occasionally I'll brush it across my thumb just to make sure that there isn't any large um, streaks of paint or anything that come off with the the bristles All right, and as a final edge highlight to this, uh, just picking off those raised areas, um, sharp corners and edges. Um, I'm doing this with some Pallid Witch Flesh. Um, I know that it's a slightly fleshy tone rather than um, a grey tone, but I think over the top of the Dawnstone and the Mechanicum Grey, um, it works quite well as a highlight. Obviously, white would have been too light, um, I could have gone maybe with Corvax White, um, as that has a slight grey tone to it. Um, but as I was going to be using Pallid Witch Flesh um, later on, just to save on paints, I used that as a colour. Um, you know, it doesn't make too much of a difference. I think it gives a, a nice highlight edge to those edges. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. So obviously I'll take that, I'll go around all of the, um, like I say, the hard sharp edges on the stone here. Um, and then with the statue itself, I'll be a little bit more um, mindful about where I want the highlights. Obviously I'm going to want them where um, all three light sources are going to be at their brightest. Um, but I don't want it too bright that when I put my glazing for my light source over them that it stands out too much. Right, so now that all of the, um, the lighter stone is done, I'm now taking some Mournfang Brown and I've got it slightly thinned down a little bit more than normal um, so that I can get it down into these um, cracks you know the gaps between the um, the paving slabs as obviously I want that to be a sort of more mud look between them um, I was in two minds whether to do it as mud or crumpled up stone um, as there are some piles of it that look a little bit more like stone um, those I did do stone and then for the gaps and stuff I did as mud now what you can see me doing with my thumb here is just um, obviously any any paint that gets on the flagstones I'm just using my th thumb or thing the thumb or finger um, to wipe off any excess um, before it has time to dry on there uh, and that will just save you know um, any having to touch up later on obviously the, I do touch ups um, off camera um, throughout all my videos um, you know there's no need for you to see me just going back with a little bit of paint to do a touch up um, but yeah so when you see me with my thumb, that's just so that I can make a touch up a little bit easier. 
Okay, so for these, um, what I will call creeper vines, um, they're obviously some sort of um, branches and stuff that's growing out of the ground. Um, I wanted a bit of a contrast up against the greys as well as the brown of the mud. I didn't want to use the Morphang brown for this. So here I'm applying some XV88, um, which is a basically an ochre, um, like a dark ochre colour. Um, and then obviously I'll lighten that up with some, uh, some other colours a little bit later on. But for now, what I'm going to be doing is working on all of the remaining base elements um, before I, you know, go in with a wash. And uh, then obviously I can carry on with the rest of the model. Okay, so now that the vines are done, I'm taking some Agrax Earthshade. And I'm just running this over all of the flagstones and the vine. Obviously being careful not to get that on the lighter stone that I've already finished. Um, you can see there that I do slip a little bit onto there. That's not a problem. I can just go back over it with some uh, light paint and touch that back up. Obviously I want this to pull most um, over the brown area. Uh, you know, the Mornfang brown and the recesses but I do want to get a little bit of colour just on the grey uh, slates so that I can get them uh, uniform and then obviously I can paint back over them um, once this is dried. Right, so once the shade has dried um, I've gone back over the slabs with um, the Mechanica Standard Grey and I'm now taking some of the Dawnstone and just edge highlighting all around these slabs. Um, now I notice a little bit of a bright contrast um, between the two. Usually I don't like to work with such a high contrast um, for edge highlighting. I prefer a lot more subtle highlights. Um, but I thought for this one I'll you know, do something a little bit different, go slightly thicker and uh, lighter with the highlights. And then obviously go again light with that for uh, the next layer uh, layer of highlights. And you can see there, I'm just touching up the uh, that tombstone where the the shade got on there a little bit. And obviously, I'll go back over that again with another light pass. Right, now what I'm doing here is with the Dawnstone, um, a little bit thinned down, I'm working away from the light source and adding in um, basically a, a highlight area. Um, obviously the light source here being the candles that are on the base of the statue, they're going to produce obviously a light radiating from them. And so for that I wanted to add in where this lighter area is going to be. Um, Obviously I've got a little bit of a gap there between the candles and the um, the brighter spot and I do go back in later and bring that a little bit closer um, but I'm bearing in mind that the flame is in the middle of the candle, um, the candle top and so it's going to cast a little bit of a shadow down around the candle before it starts to get bright um, on the floor and obviously doing the same here. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of texture with this by sort of spackling it down um, just to get, like I say, a bit of texture on the the, uh, the paving stone here where that light's on it and it's going to pick up textures and bumps and things like that a little bit more. Obviously there are some candles on here that aren't lit and so I'm, you know, having to bear in mind what shadows and areas they're going to um, block off and the same obviously with the statue itself what areas of that are going to be lit compared to what won't. Alright, so next up I'm just going to paint the skulls here and the candles with Ushapti Bone. Um, now they're both going to have a different shade put on them, so although the bone colour is the same, they are going to have a slightly different uh, result um, as the shade is obviously going to stain that colour.
Okay, so to give this vine tree thing um, a slightly lighter look, a paler look, um, I'm taking some Bane Blade Brown here and using this as a highlight. Obviously leaving some area of the Agrax Earth Shade and obviously a little bit of the uh, XV88 there as well. Now again with my paints being a little bit thinned I can use that as a way of getting a mid-tone between um, what I'm painting on and what I'm painting with. Um, I hope that makes sense um, because some of the under color, underlying color is going to show through that less pigmented um, paint. And then as you build it up obviously you then start building more opaque um, and that's obviously how we get glazes and layers is by building it up and using the the underlying tone to influence what we're putting over the top. Okay, so for the leaves on the base, um, obviously there's a few of them down there. I didn't want to go overly complicated and detailed with them. So all I've done is gave them a straight coat of Lauren Forest. And then I'm just picking off the edges with some Nurgling Green, which is what you can see me doing now. Um, and then obviously leaving that Lauren Forest as that center area, um, which will be a little bit darker. Now obviously the, the main focus of the base is the statue, which I know a lot of people tend to leave the base, um, on myself included, a little bit flat detailed, but not quite as outstanding as the model, as obviously you don't want to draw away from the model. But the statue on this piece, I want it to be a part of the model. You know, it's not just um, part of the base. It's part of the model. The base to me is the stone area and everything under the statue. Um, because, because the statue is um, vertical, um, in my mind it's more a part of the model than it is the base. So for the roses now I'm just taking some uh, corn red and uh, obviously just getting a, a base coat of those in and then I'll add a shade over the top and then uh, obviously the edge highlighting. So it's just a couple of roses on here, uh, I think maybe three total. So, you know, nothing too complicated. Okay, so here I'm just giving the skulls a wash of uh, Reikland Flesh Shade and I'll also use that on the candles and the, uh, the roses just to put a little bit of shadow within the roses. Um, as the working flesh shade, obviously it's brown, but it does have a slight red tint. Um, against the that corn red, um, it just adds a nice little bit of shadow into the the insides of the roses there. Okay, so once the shades are finished, I'll uh, come in with some Wazduka red, and I'm just touching the tops of the roses um, with the side of the brush. There's not a huge amount of paint on here. It's just enough to catch those edges and then obviously the corn red is on the outer side um, and then some of that shading down on the inside of the roses. And then for the skulls and the candles I'll just go back with the uh, Ushapti bone and just pick off some highlights obviously leaving some of that shading down the side of the skull and the, uh, the backs and obviously the same with the candles. I'll pick off the melted wax and the top and then on the column of the candles um, obviously I'll take that up to just shy of the, um, the recess where the shading has obviously given that shadow. Right so now that the base is done I'm just taking some Uriel yellow here and I've thinned it down quite a bit. Um, so just a little bit more thicker than a glaze consistency and I may thin it a little bit more um, I'm just testing it obviously on a small area of the stone um, and all I'm doing is glazing this over the area where I want that light to be hitting um, this is probably the most basic form of um, source lighting um, that you can do and it is just using your light source color as a glaze to lighten up the um, or influence the color of 
that area. So obviously bearing in mind where the light is going to reach, where it's going to light up and its strongest point as well as its lightest points. Now because it's thin obviously I can um, use this as a glaze and just sort of very thinly um, apply it to get that slight fade um, of the light. So obviously with the candles here it's going to light the tops of the stones, the uh, you know the sides where the candles are as well as the uh, side of the angel's leg there and then the same with the flagstones on the floor and uh, some of these raised areas. Now although the light obviously is going to light up a large area the colour area is going to be relatively small you know just a small area around the candles um, and then it will just become more of a brighter sort um, a lighter stone color the further away from the light source it is obviously it's got light but it's not influenced enough by the light to change the uh, the color obviously the under area of um, the statue here is going to be lit up by those candles so it's going to be quite light there and then um, obviously a little bit on the sword as well as some of the the wing and the feather now top of the statue wise obviously because of where this candle is it's going to um, catch just under the hand that is holding the helmet and some of the arm there um, and then that will be about it for the light source Okay, so now that I've got um, my light source roughly marked out, I'm just taking some of the very faded um, yellow here, and again, I'm just highlighting the furthest source away. Now you can see there's barely any pigment in this. It's just enough to add a slight tint to the stone to show that that light is hitting it. And then obviously the same down here. Um, now there is a little bit um, later on that I forget to record um, and that's that I just take some slightly darker grey um, I think it was the Mechanica standard again and I just go down some of the areas where I want a darker shadow so pretty much the other side of any dark light source um, and I'll add a shadow to those sides so obviously um, folds in the statue's cloak is going to have um, light on one side and then the other side is going to be quite dark now like I said there is another light source so it's not going to be um, you know a dark black grey it's just going to be darker than the uh, obviously the mid midstone colour okay and with that the base is pretty much finished bar some final um, light effect that will come um, towards the end of doing the horse um, now don't worry I know I am holding the base throughout the rest of this model but I have varnished it with a couple of coats of matte varnish um, so that as I'm handling it I'm not going to wear off any paint um, obviously normally I would finish the bases last so I wouldn't need to worry about that but because I did the base first I want to make sure that I'm not wearing any paint off and so I applied the varnish so all I'm doing now is taking some hex wraith flame and I'm just giving the horse an even coat of this um, letting some of it sit in the uh, recesses now the main body of the horse that you can see that I'm doing here is going to be a different color but the back legs and all of those little flame parts of it, so the tail and the flames that are coming off the hoof, or hooves I should say, um, and its mane, I want to have that spooky um, ethereal green um, glow to it. Um, almost as though it's um, coming, becoming solid, so it's going from a ghostly form to a more solid form um, as it becomes real and so obviously the front of the horse is going to be more real and then as it gets further back it's going to be a little bit more of this um, spooky green so I'll apply this and then as always with washes and these technical colors 
I'll wait for about 10 to 20 minutes, um, depending, uh, for it to dry, and then I can move on with the next step. Okay, so I'm now making a um, custom mix here, or a, a thinned down um, Nighthaunt Gloom. Um, I think this is around eight or nine um, brushfuls of the Nighthaunt Gloom. And then I'll thin that down with about five or six drops of Lamian Medium, uh, which we'll actually take a look now and we'll, we'll count those out. Um, it's not an exact mix. This is just something that I make up roughly um, and just try and get the consistency that I want. So there's two, three, four, five. So yeah, five, five drops. And I'll probably add a, a few more depending um, and a little bit of water. And what I'm looking to do is to get this um, fairly thin straight from the pot. This is quite a uh, potent. Here you go. Look, a couple more drops. Uh, it's quite a potent um, color. It's very, it's thin, but it's thick at the same time. It's hard uh, to sort of describe. But if you've used it before, then you'll know what I mean. Um, but because this is going to be used for the body of the horse as its main color, I need to get a gradient from the. Um, the spooky green to a solid night haunt gloom um, which is very similar to incubi darkness um, so you could probably do it with thinning down incubi darkness obviously you're going to get a slight difference between it but you can see here that as i'm applying it it's super thin um, you know it's barely showing as that dries that's gonna you know barely be there and this is the most time consuming part of this model um, is obviously painting this, letting it dry, and then going over multiple times, um, layer over layer, working back a little bit each time um, from the back of the legs so that I can get that fade from that green into the Nighthaunt Gloom. So rather than bore you guys with uh, me doing a hundred plus layers of this, we can uh, use the magic of editing and jump right to the end result of the uh, the Nighthaunt Gloom. So now that the um, Nighthaunt Gloom has reached the opacity that I want, I'm now taking some Corellia Green Shade, I think that's how you pronounce it, and I'm using this to darken down some of the recesses and give a slight blue-green tint to the um, the Nighthaunt Gloom. So obviously I'm pulling this a little bit in recesses, but just using it as a glaze across flatter surfaces. Obviously try not to leave uh, brush marks or anything. Um, now one thing I noticed as I'd done this, um, purely by mistake, is the Nighthaunt Gloom on the very peaks of um, edges, so hard edges and the rib cage and things like that, some of that green shows through a little bit and I decided to leave it like that rather than constantly trying to build up to hide it. I thought that it gives a, a nice natural highlight, um, you know, sort of, sort of an eerie glow to the structure and, you know, the muscles and that of this, haunt, uh, this horse. So I've left them in. And then, like I say, I'm applying the green shade now um, over all of this. I'll let it dry for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and uh, carry on. Uh, but just a quick mention, you'll notice on the statue, I took some of that, um, the green, I can't remember what it was called now, but the green for the legs, and I just applied a slightly thinned down version of it onto the statue just to give um, another glow effect, so another light source um, across the top part of the statue. Um, whether or not it works, you guys can let me know in the comments what you think about that. Like I say, it's just very basic um, source lighting. Um, it's by no means a professional way of doing it, um, and it doesn't give a professional look, but I do think that it does look well for uh, tabletop standards um, on a model like this. Okay, so now that the Coelia Green Shade is almost dry, and the reason I say almost is I'm painting areas that aren't near it. 
um, any of those wet areas. But I'm just taking some Ushapti bone here and obviously this is going to take a few layers just to get over some of that green staining from the uh, whatever that green is. I cannot remember the name of it right now but that green. Um, obviously this bone colour I'm going to apply to the front legs here. Any exposed bones um, such as the ribs and some of the, uh, he's got a couple of hip bones that show. Um, and also his face, he's got um, a bit of an exposed skull, um, mainly around the mouth, but I want that obviously in the bone as well. Um, I'll also do the candles with this as I did with the ones on the base. Um, obviously the shading on them is going to make them stand out different to the bone, but obviously the Shepti bone saves having to use a different paint for the candles. I'll just go and use the Shepti bone. Okay, so taking a quick break from the horse now. I'm moving on to Reichnor and using some Ethermatic Blue Contrast Paint, which I think is great for these uh, spooky guys. I'm just applying this to the ghostly part of him. Now, obviously, he's got his um, black hooded robe on, but the under parts of him, uh, which would have been his body um, are going to be a little bit more or they're going to be ghostly so I wanted them with this uh, this ghostly blue now I'm going to go from the blue to a slightly lighter uh, white towards the um, the ends of these ghostly parts um, but what I'll do is obviously get a nice even coat throughout and then blend it back up by adding a couple more layers um, just a little bit nearer to the top um, where his uh, robe overlaps his body. Okay, so while Reichnor dries off, I'm moving back to the horse and using some Abaddon Black, I'm just going over any of the um, areas that will be metal um, and obviously anything that will be black. So that's the uh, the horse's, I'm not sure what this piece is called, but his headpiece, um, any leather straps and also chains. Um, I will then move over to Reichnor and do the same with his cloak and obviously any of the, uh, the metal areas on him as well. So obviously that's his chains, his... Uh, back armour there as well as his scythe. Okay so now I, the uh, Ethermatic Blue has dried I'm just taking some white paint and as you can see I'm just dry brushing this concentrating a little bit more on the, um, the tips here but working my way up into that blue slightly to get a nice fade from uh, obviously that that blue down into the white um, as you can see there's barely any paint on the brush here um, I'm wiping obviously any excess off and again I'm using my little lid there as I don't want to use the wet palette because obviously that will make the paint a little bit too wet um, and that will take away from the the effect of the dry brushing now obviously this does take a little bit, you do have to build dry brushing up, um, you don't want to put it all down in one coat. Um, the dust that you can see coming off the bristles there is actually some of the paint pigment that it is, it is that dry that it is literally dusting off the, uh, the brush. I'll also do this um, very lightly over all of the black robe um, just to give some um, highlight in there and what this will also do is give a, um, a rough texture to that robe um, making it look a little bit more like a fabric rather than um, you know sort of a, a smooth leather. Alright and carrying on with the white dry brushing um, I do the same thing with the tips of the horse here, 
um, just on the green areas and not too much just a slight um, you know just to brighten up some of those more raised edges and the uh, the tip slightly okay so I'm now taking a 50 50 mix of tesseract glow and the um, the green that I cannot remember the name um, and all I'm doing is going back over um, and what this is going to do is really vibrant up that green area um, I will do this a little bit on the statue as well um, just to pick off some edges um, but it's basically just to pick off those areas that were originally or that I just dry brushed white um, I'll let this dry and then I'll go back in with the green that I cannot remember um, and wash all over it and what that will do is leave those white highlight areas um, with this green glow on it and darken in those recesses again um, I know it's a little bit hard you know to understand or I hope that you know that you can understand how I'm explaining it but we'll skip ahead now and you can see what the result would look like once that's done and there we go you can see that once I've got that hex wraith flame which is the name of the green I cannot remember um, once I've got that shade back in there it brings that vibrancy back down a little bit but leaves a little bit there um, on those outer edges um, just to give that nice eerie spooky glow what I'm now doing is taking some Balthazar gold and using this as a, um, a bronze brassy type color for um, the horse's armor um, I'll also use this on Reichnor's um, face as well as his shoulder pauldrons obviously this is a metallic going over black it is going to take a couple of coats um, but we'll get this on and be back in just a bit all right so next up I'm taking some lead belcher and just going in all of the areas that I want a uh, you know a silver metallic color um, so that's obviously all the chains um, padlocks um, the chainmail armor that comes from just under the horse's plate armor there as well as obviously the uh, the scythe itself um, and then obviously there's a few little sort of um, rings and um, around the staff there you can see the uh, you've got some iron rings I'll also do them uh, the staff itself has been given a coat of XV88 as well um, so yeah I'll get on with this and catch you guys in a tick and finally just for the trim around this part of the uh, the horse uh, or the horse's armor I'm just using some retributor armor gold um, just to have as a, a, a brighter gold a more yellow gold um, than obviously the Balthazar gold so again I'll get a couple of coats of this down and uh, I'll be back in a bit okay so I'm now taking some Agrax earth shade and I'm running this over the candles the obviously the arms of Reichnor himself as well as the bones of the uh, horse and also the Balthazar gold and the retributor armor um, I you know I give this a good generous coat in let it pull up a little bit um, you know I want a bit of a dirty stain look on this um, and for those silver metallic areas so anything that was done in lead belcher I'll use uh, non oil and again just give those a good generous wash over the top letting it seep, it seep into the recesses on the chain mail and any sort of detailing on the um, the scythe and then obviously I'll leave that for about 10 to 15 minutes 20 minutes if I need to to uh, fully dry and then I can move on 
Right, and so moving back to the bone and the candles now, I'm just taking some Ushapti bone, um, a little bit thinner than normal, and I'm just going back over some of the more flat and uh, high lit areas with the Ushapti bone, uh, just to add some highlight, obviously leave, leaving that um, stained Agrax tint in the uh, the recesses, and just to give a bit of depth with the uh, the bone. So obviously I'll do this all over the bone on the horse, uh, the candles, as well as Reichnor's arms. I will then follow this up with a further edge highlight of Screaming Skull. Um, just picking off obviously either side of the joints and around the tops of the hooves here as well as the um, teeth and sort of you know really sort of peak ridges of the uh, the horse's skull. Also uh, Reichnor's fingers that are more uh, parallel with the ground um, and the top of his arm things like that. And also with the candles um, I'll just concentrate this on the wax area at the top where the flame would be. Um, you know where that pool of melted wax would be as well as the drips that come down uh, just to make them stand off a little bit from the the main body of the candle itself okay so moving back to the metallics on the armor now um, I'm taking some screaming bell here and I'm just using this as an edge highlight um, on the Balthazar gold areas just to give a little bit more of a reddish tint um, to the high points obviously this armor um, I've designed or want to have a bit more of a grimy dirty look so I'm not going to brighten it back up with the Balthazar gold but I am going to use this just on those edges um, just to show a slightly little bit more of a cleaner uh, metal that it is this sort of more sort of reddish tint to it I'll then take some uh, Stormhost Silver and use this for edge highlighting um, all of the obviously silverish metallic areas, so all of that uh, lead belcher. Um, going around these little indent indentations on the scythe here um, just to add some highlighting as well as obviously the sharp edges and corners of the blade. Um, also this part of the blade you can see I'm just sort of roughly streaking up uh, with some close streaks as obviously that part of the blade will get used quite a bit and is going to wear off um, and pretty much keep its shine. So yeah, just thought I'd add a little bit of highlight there. And then obviously moving around, picking off all those chains, the padlocks um, and any of those other sort of silver metal areas. And then finally I'll just pick off edge highlights of the uh, the Retributor armor with this uh, Stormhost Silver just to give a little bit of a, a shine um, you know a, a highlight on the uh, the gold parts of this armor and just to finish off the detailing on Reichnor's uh, cloak here he's got this trim area um, I just went over that with some uh, corn red um, to get that deep red and now I'm just highlighting or edge highlighting with the um, Wazdaka red uh, just along the edge there, nothing too complicated, uh, you know, nice and easy, nice and quick. And finally just to add some texture and finish off the uh, the metallic areas here. I'm taking some typhus corrosion with an old uh, brush and just sort of splashing this around a few places just to give that rust effect um, or in the case of the Balthazar gold areas just some uh, sort of you know dirty grimy mud grit effect to it um, I'll then obviously follow that up on the rust areas so anything that is um, lead belcher with some um, rise of rust um, and just sort of gently dry brush that over the top of the uh, the typhus corrosion areas um, just to give a little bit of an orange tint to them 
Okay, so now that Reichnor's finished, I'm using the same um, washdown uh, Nighthawk glue mix that I did for the main body of the horse. And all I'm doing is, again, just building this up, um, bringing each layer back a small amount until I go from that pale Nighthawk gloom right at the, um, the torn edges, so the top edge of the, uh, the wing here, and it will gradually get darker as it becomes... Um, further into the wing and then obviously for the um, what I would call the fingers of the wing um, you know those bony parts um, I'll concentrate this more over the tops of those um, to get them darker and match the flesh color of the body of the horse uh, so that it all blends in obviously letting this dry between each layer so I'll do one side of one wing put that down do the other side uh, one side of the other wing put that down flip the first wing back over and do that put that down and then back to the second wing flip that over and do that that gives enough time between sides for the paint to dry so that when I flip it over to do the other side it doesn't uh, start running and pooling anywhere um, and then obviously by the time I've done the back side of the second wing the front side of the first wing has dried that I can then go and do another coat again just like the horse this takes a long time to do um, but the end result isn't too bad okay so once I've got the wing up to the opacity that I want I'm now taking a, a large dry brush this is the um, the army painter dry brush and using some white um, I believe this was ceramite white um, I'm removing the excess paint and dry brushing obviously as you can see from this edge up to about halfway up the wing um, I don't mind going over the, uh, the you know the body element of the wing here what I'm trying to do is obviously get this faded area um, I did consider doing this area with the um, hex wraith flame to match him with the horse but I thought that on the wings it might look a bit too much I thought this would look better with more damaged wings just fading off rather than the uh, the hex wraith look to them so what I'm doing here with this circular motion is picking off the flatter area um, obviously dry brushing typically picks off raised edges but with this circular motion um, I can get a little bit more of a gradient um, on that flatter area and obviously I'm going to be going over this with a, a different paint so I want to get it relatively smooth um, but it's also going to pick, pick up the texture of that um, primer paint and give the wings a little bit more of a textured look to them um, so yeah what I'm wanting to do obviously is try and leave that dark edge um, along each of the bone areas and then get brighter um, towards the middle and then obviously especially along the bottom Again, this is um, multiple times over to get this up to a, a relatively bright white. Um, and then I can move on to the next step. Okay, so once that uh, dry brushing is on there, I'm going back to the Coelia green shade. And I'm now giving this that uh, tint to match it up to the, um, the horse. So obviously on those lighter areas where I've just dry brushed the white, um, some of that white's going to show through a little bit and this Coelia green shade is going to be a little bit uh, lighter, a little bit paler and obviously where the Nighthaunt gloom is it's going to appear um, a little bit darker and that will then blend up into the body of the horse um, and tie it all together obviously I'll uh, then stand this for about 10 to 15 minutes to uh, let it dry okay and finally um, the wings have a couple of um, talon type pieces to them um, this one here and then one right down by the uh, the body so again just like the rest of the bone on the piece I'm going to give this a coat with uh, a shapti bone let that dry wash that down with some agrax earth shade and then with the screaming skull just um, lightly pull back from about two-thirds of the way up the um, the claw um, towards the the main body of it 
and then concentrate it a little bit more towards the top the tip so it will have like a brighter tip that comes down to the darker bone um, you'll also notice that with the wings um, the flesh areas so the the bony looking parts um, on the top I went over with the Nighthawk Gloom um, to darken that up and then back over with the Coelia Green Shade just so that it blends in fully with the uh, the skin of the horse Okay, and there he is guys, one finished Reichnor the Grim Hailer. So, thanks a lot for joining me, as always guys, it's been a pleasure. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, and if you aren't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button for more videos on the Mortal Realm series, and coming late summer will be the Imperium uh, 40k collection uh, series, so if you into 40k and you want to see those videos do hit that subscribe button and uh, get watching those too but until next time guys thanks a lot for joining me take it easy and keep painting those minis